Said the night wind to the little lad. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lad. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? A star. A star shining in the night with a tail as big as a kite, with a tail as big as a kite. Said the little lamb to the shepherd boy, Do you see? Sky shepherd boy, do you hear what I hear? Do you hear what I hear? A song, a song, high above the trees, with a voice as big as the sea, with a voice as big as the sea. Said the shepherd boy to the mighty king, Do you know what I know? Do you know what I know? In your palace, warm, mighty king. Do you know what I know? Do you know what I know? A child, a child. Shivers in the cold. Let us bring him silver and gold. Let us bring him silver and gold. Said the king to the people everywhere. Listen to what I say. Listen to what I say. Pray for peace, people everywhere. Listen to what I say. Listen to what I say. The child, the child, sleeping in the night. He will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and light. Welcome to our Hilldale Salem virtual service on this first Sunday after Christmas. The psalmist calls on the natural world, celestial bodies, fire and earth, creatures and all humanity, to praise God. The voices of Simeon and 84-year-old Anna join the chorus today, recognizing what God is doing in Jesus. Simeon's song is often sung after communion, for we have seen God's salvation in the assembled community and have held Jesus in our hands in the bread. Then, like the prophet Anna, we tell of Jesus to all who look for the healing of the world. Confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who was in the beginning and makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. 
We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Dear friends, hear the good news of God's grace. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own works, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people. With all who came to the manger, rejoice in this amazing gift of peace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us join in singing our opening song. Today's first reading is from Isaiah chapter 61. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and the, all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. 
You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Today's second reading is from Galatians chapter 4. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir, through God. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to the second chapter of the Gospel according to Luke. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle ducks, doves and two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been re revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, you now are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what's being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband 70 years after her marriage, and then as a widow to the age of 84, she never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Merry Christmas to you. And yes, it has been a very unusual Christmas, to say the least. A global pandemic, lockdowns, protests, bitter political division, economic anxieties, social anxieties, social isolation, loneliness. Today is the first Sunday after Christmas and the last Sunday of 2020. Our gospel lesson for today is about Mary and Joseph going to the temple to fulfill a religious ritual. Every bit is familiar to them and others in the temple that day, as an infant baptism is to us Christians today. Jesus is being dedicated to, Lord, to the Lord, as was the custom. But a very odd thing happened in the temple that day. Two elderly people named Anna and Simeon 
were suddenly ooing and awing over this eight-day-old precious bundle. Simeon could now die in peace. He had been waiting a long time for the promised Savior. Simeon has kept the faith. He has come regularly to the temple to pray and fast. In his elder years, Simeon gets to see that God does keep his promises, and it's all wrapped up in this wee baby. Hear now how theologian Frederick Buchner describes what happened next. And Buchner writes, Jesus was still in diapers when his parents brought him to the temple in Jerusalem, as the custom was. And that's when old Simeon spotted them. Years before, Simeon had been told he wouldn't die till he had seen the Messiah with his own eyes. And time was running out. He was up there in years. When the moment finally came, and one look through his cataract lenses was all that it took. He asked if it would be all right if he held the baby in his arms. And Mary and Joseph told him to go ahead, but be careful not to drop him. Master, you now are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. His parents were as pleased as punch, so he blessed them too for good measure. And something about the mother stopped him, and his expression changed. What he saw in her face was a long way off, but it was there so plainly he couldn't pretend. A sword will pierce through your soul, he said. Simeon would have rather bitten off his own tongue than say it, but in that holy place he felt he had no other choice. Then he handed back Mary her baby and departed in something less than perfect peace, the peace that he had dreamed of all these long years of waiting. End of quote. Who knows what kind of a Messiah Simeon and Anna had expected to see. Perhaps they envisioned a day when a shining Alexander the Great-like figure would ride up to the temple on a white stallion and take the place by storm from the dreaded Romans who held the power at that time. Or maybe they pictured a day when someone with the sculpted good looks of King David of old would stride through the temple courts as angels sang overhead and people fell to their feet. Whatever these two prophets thought they would see, it was far, far quieter than all of that. What they saw was a baby. They saw a poor family. They saw a mother and father who were completely blown away by the testimony of Simeon and Anna as to what was to come. Today we also meet Anna. Anna was always in the temple. She was worshiping, fasting, and praying. When Anna heard what Simeon was saying, she too praised God and told everyone that Jesus was the Savior, was the Savior that God had promised. May God give you a heart like hers and a song to sing to praise God, just as the angels sang and the shepherds watched. Luke tells us that this is not just a cute baby story from long ago. Christmas is the beginning of God changing the world. Christmas means God came down to us in human flesh. Although our celebrations are scaled back and not what we would want or what we would expect, we can still experience Christmas in the place that matters the most, in our hearts and in our souls. Because God is with us, may we be like Simeon, prepared to die in peace, knowing that God is faithful and God keeps his word. 
May we be like Anna, coming together to give praise and thanksgiving to God for this amazing gift that God has given us. And may we be like Mary and Joseph, recognizing that this child is God in the flesh. May the blessings of this holy time be with you and your loved ones. And may Christ be born again within you and among you. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Amen. We will now join in singing our hymn. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Night and day, all creatures praise you, O God. Strengthen your church across the nations, denominations, and traditions. Fill us with wisdom and unify our proclamation of your forgiveness and mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The nations are upheld by your hand, O God. Cause the righteousness, cause righteousness and praise to spring forth, inspiring leaders to serve you with compassion and integrity. Send your spirit of discernment upon legislators grappling with complex issues for the sake of the common good of all. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Send the spirit of your Son into our hearts, O oh God. Come quickly to our hearts that race with fear, hearts that break with grief, and hearts that long for wholeness. Reveal your power to heal and to save. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Adopt us into your family, O God. Bless our elders with the peace and joy of Simeon and Anna. Strengthen those who have retired, those who work in older age, and those in need of income, food, company, or health care. 
Connect young and old across generations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, fill us with wonder and hope for your world. May the celebration of your birth help us to feel that God is near to us always. May the small disappointments of an unusual Christmas remind us of all of those who suffer so much more. Be near us, Lord Jesus. We ask you to stay close. Love us forever. Bless all the dear children in your tender care. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Let us depart in peace, O oh God, according to your word. For all your saints, we give you thanks. Prepare our salvation in the sight of your witness and of every time and place. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. And hear us now as we pray together the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As I've said many times, it's been an unusual Christmas. In the small and larger events of life, God continues to bless us during this lockdown. What are you thankful for this season? Let us give thanks to God for all that God has given us. Gracious God, you came to us as one unknown, bringing joy and salvation to the earth. Nourish us at your banquet table, that all who welcome your birth, we proclaim your peace, revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Receive now the blessing. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaim joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the magi by, by a star. Bless you this day through the word made flesh, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God. We will now have our closing song.
Springs, the hills and mountains shall be gold and sea.